money is a huge stand in for values. So even if you're not talking about money, you're expressing your values through the way that you approach money, the way that you spend money, the way that you save money. And so one of the concepts that we recommend is before you commit yourself to someone, whatever that looks like for you, have those conversations that you would have if you were developing a prenuptial agreement. So we know that more and more people than ever before are ha developing prenups. I think they've either seen their parents go through a divorce or maybe they delayed marriage and so therefore have more assets and more debt. Uh, and so it's going to be more complex than if you got married, you know, in your when you were 18 and you didn't have any assets or debt. Uh, and so and and so some people are are going in and actually developing prenups, but we think that you can get the same benefit of a prenup, I mean, not legally, but by working through the same questions you would ask to develop them, but stopping short of creating a legal document, which has all sorts of costs and lawyers involved and things like that. And so the idea of how are you going to share expenses? Uh, and this is one that actually my husband and I looked at. We wrote our final paper for my risk class about how we were going to approach living together. And one of those questions was how we were going to uh, approach finances. And you could, there's one of three approaches typically. People either um, pool everything, meaning you combine paychecks, everything, and all, you know, just use that shared fund to fund your expenses. You partially combine, right? So you have a percentage from someone's paycheck or a specific amount that goes together, and then you use that to cover rent and other expenses, or you combine nothing. What the research shows is that the couples who are most successful are couples that have combined at least something, right? So even if you don't put everything together and say, this is ours, there's no, you know, one person, first member of the couple, second member of the couple and, and the joint, it's like everything is joint. Or, you know, what my husband and I decided to do was ultimately we were actually making very different salaries when we graduated from business school. He was working for a hedge fund and I was working for a nonprofit, but we had rent to pay. And so what we did is we took a percentage of our salaries, put it to the shared account and used that to pay for our expenses. But then we actually upped that percentage over time. So we said when we get engaged, it'll be, you know, we'll increase it to this amount. And then when we get married, it's this amount. And, and that was a helpful, those were sort of um, tranches almost, or, or kind of yeah. like milestones for us to be able to adjust over time as we got more comfortable with each other and as we had more trust and uh, a sense of, okay, this other person is not going to be, you know, taking our savings and spending it recklessly. But, but having that intentional approach does help you build to something where now, I mean, yeah, we put everything together, like, except for a very small amount that we keep to pay for gifts or to, you know, do something that we don't want the other person to get the credit card bill for, like a, you know, girls weekend, like that's not something I would, you know, necessarily expect uh, us to pay for the, from the shared fund, but it's helpful. And it's also helpful to set amounts that you need to check in with the other person before you spend. Um, and so that's another practice that we advise uh, to set the, like, let's just check in if it's over, you could do it for anything like a hundred dollars, a thousand dollars. And again, that will change over time. Mm -hmm.